Uh, this is Didi Westbrook here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you, Andy, Mike, and Jason, Tuesday, July 21st. Engine closer! 2020 continues. We're with you. Great show today. Fun, quick question. Talk some COVID, NFL, NFL PA news. Implications for your fantasy football league that was not that's not the fun quick question those were two statements correct yeah i'm no punctuation right to start the show i'm just saying like no, no commas no periods <laughs> fun so christopher walken talks <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> but uh no we have a great show we're going to answer some mailbag questions we're going to talk about a lot of different things period twitter at the ff ballers instagram.com slash the oh no that's a lie Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, <laughs> YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. People know where to find us at this point. I don't need to be at. I don't know. I, have we hit the 200K on YouTube yet? We had to. That is one of the most frequently commented things that I see on YouTube is people don't understand how we don't have more. Because, like on YouTube, you know, you've got these channels with several million subscribers. It's because you all keep it a secret. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're your secret source for winning championships we've designed a business model that people want to keep to themselves it's the worst it's the worst business decision it's the opposite of like uh, viral it's, marketing whatever that yeah, is the, the grassroots growth of <laughs> you learn about it and then you think about telling who te- uh, two people who would think about right telling two other people yeah, a lot of people just, thinking about it yeah a lot of people are considering <laughs> spreading the word but um, this, see we should have like a foot clan challenge <laughs> where once you win your championship which of course you're gonna do within three years listening to this show for sure <laughs> that's our guarantee at that point then you say well can you <laughs> can you win a championship while the rest of your league knows that about is this? the strategy we came up with to make people overcome that urge to keep it a secret now an update you are here, right update we are 10,000 away from our 200,000 marker. At youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers where right. they can subscribe and click the bell. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, we welcome you into the show today. Before I hit the quick question, a reminder, the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, back better than ever. You get the app. You get the desktop version. Updated all the time. A dollar from every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Ultimatedraftkit.com for that. Here's the quick question from a YouTube subscriber. He says, what is the best and worst fantasy punishment that you've ever heard of for coming in last place in your league? So something I'm not familiar with, so this is not, I might not be really able to answer it. Well, you know, the reality is because we've done this job full time for, you know, the better part of a decade now, um, I would say we hear a lot of these, you know, people are, they're always wanting to let us know the cool things they do. And my personal favorite that has not been topped, I think I heard about it about a year and a half ago, is making the loser actually have to go to the, you know, you can go and take the SAT (laughs) tests. And so you you have to go back. You're talking about, you're talking about my man, Ned from the Try Guys. Yeah. Is that what, is that who did it? That's yeah, exactly. You know, having to go back and take the SATs in a room full of high schoolers, that is brilliant punishing <laughs> you should have to uh, present that score to your league oh, as for well sure for sure because if i were to go back and take the sat now i mean there's zero chance i could score what i did out of high school i'm smarter now than i was in high school but i'm so far removed from this that, i mean i have a hard time now with my children's sixth grade math it's like how do you do this again <laughs> i've learned that the older i get the more i need to tr- trust the quick instinct answer on something because if i start to think about it too much i don't know how to do it anymore multiplication tables if it doesn't come out instantly i don't know it we're too old it's called the calculator uh i like the simplicity of 
the winning team getting to name the last place <laughs> team for the next year. Yes. That, it's so mm. simple and easy to do, but the winner gets the privilege of naming the last place, te- place team for now, the whole year. what if that team goes from last – to champion that year oh, the, and oof. on the trophy you have the worst <laughs> name ever that's them the breaks yeah andy's stinky butt won the championship that <laughs> congratulations. year congratulations <laughs> that's what you're going with <laughs> uh very nice very nice yeah we uh we do have a wheel of water app uh we haven't mentioned it in forever we we made that years ago as a way to punish people and our league if you finish last on draft day the loser spins the wheel of water. Uh, every team gets to spin it and then dump water all over the loser. Which and then they draft soaking that. wet. Yeah, we did upgrade. And that. Yes, they. You have to draft soaking wet. Which in Arizona, it sounds like a delight, but that is incorrect no. because we all set our our air conditioning down to like seventy three. We have upgraded that, Andy. I don't know if you remember. I but do remember now, now. Yeah. Now the water punishment is we're making like a a turtleneck sweater yeah. that will be a, a trophy of sorts because it will have their record i can't was it their records on the back or the other teams i know it's wool i know but that it's, the yeah, sweater it's a wool is turtleneck wool. sweater that you're gonna wear Drenched. and dressed in that and probably get pneumonia yeah it's sitting in a wool wet <laughs> freezing cold it sweater sounds, for two this so is awful. we're gonna be arrested <laughs> I've seen people with they get car wraps. You know, you've seen the the, the truck driving oh, down gosh. the street oh, that's yeah, got yeah. the wrap about being a, a fantasy loser, or uh, the subreddits where you go to uh, what was that? I think that was get Paul roasted. Charge. Yeah, roast me. Oh um, gosh, that's dangerous. <laughs> all sorts of you come up with crazy punishments for your league. Every league should have a punishment for last place. And if you're listening to this show, make it as bad as it can be because it won't be you. So. That's right. That's right. Have let's no get, fear. Let's let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right. One of the things we want to start bringing into the news and notes on the show is just some discussion around what's taking place with the NFL, the National Football League Players Association, all the implications of COVID and how the health and safety of the players and the different uh, circumstances surrounding this very strange 2020 season may impact your fantasy team and what's just keep you in the know on what's going on. So as of this recording, which we're recording this show late Monday afternoon, releasing it on Tuesday, and uh, here, here's the headline news that I think our listeners would be interested in. Uh, for one, players are, uh, veterans are going to report to training camp on July 28th, and that Schedule, that timing has not changed. The NFL and NFLPA, as of this afternoon, have agreed to daily COVID-19 testing. Which is great. Yeah, it's great uh, if you're not the ones getting the tests up the nose. It's <laughs> great for sport. having football. Yes. It's great for keeping – it's great for player safety. health, safe, safe yeah. player football. safety, and making sure that the season continues. So I, I view this as a major win for the players – and for the fans. Yes. And uh, and for the NFL. It's called a, uh, tr- it's triple a win- threat. It's a win-win-win. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this was something the players wanted. If you saw the Twitter campaigns from tons of players, they were pushing towards health and safety daily testing. It'll cost the NFL a bunch of money. but uh, then It'll they- save the NFL a yeah, bunch of money. Yeah, it will. Uh, then to, f- to the fantasy aspects here, something we've been discussing in our league uh, – as proposed by the NFL, players who test positive for COVID-19 would be placed on the commissioner exempt list with no minimum or maximum stay. So originally, this was reported that there would be a minimum three-week stay on the IR, a specific designation. Uh, now it seems like there's no minimum or maximum stay. But we've been talking in our league about how mm-hmm. to accommodate these kind of uh crazy circumstances for this year because you have rosters with roster sizes, IR spots, decisions to be made on a week-to-week basis. And I actually really, Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you because uh, you made the point of basically when we were discussing this with our league that COVID has, you know, this this pandemic (laughs) has done enough to kind of ruin this year that you didn't want it to ruin your fantasy league. Yeah, it, exactly. Some people want to treat COVID. So, you know, a player gets sick, they're going to miss a couple of weeks. They want to treat that as that's just, that's uh, like an injury risk. That's part of the game. 
we you can't project it. It's just gonna it's gonna happen. And we look, it's gonna it's probably going to happen. We don't know what the scale will be. Maybe it's just a few players. I mean, really, really hope it's that. Well, you, well, you hope it's none. You realistically hope it's a few, uh, but it could be more. We just we have no clue. And uh, my proposal to the league was put as many IR spots in as the your platform will allow, and those are just dedicated to COVID. And if a player contracts it, they go on there, and everyone, there is an honor system built in that the second they are activated from by the NFL, then they're back on your active squad. You have to either cut players, you got to, you know, make your roster legal. But my whole argument was, COVID is terrible. I have we, I'm, we're trapped in our homes. You know, I've been my wife and I have been trapped in our house with our kids for like 130 days or something. It's ruining things all over the country for any semblance of normal life. Let's minimize what it does to your fantasy football roster because we know it's going to affect it, right? Like, it's just, it's part of life now uh, for the foreseeable future. So minimize it as much as we possibly can, just like the NFL is trying to minimize it with, with safety protocol as much as they possibly can. Yeah, and so I, I like that strategy. I mean... You know, you don't know how many players it's going to affect. You want a fair playing field for everybody in your league, and you want to minimize the amount of, uh, you know, disruption that it brings to an already disrupted season. So uh, we'll keep tracking with what the NFL does on these fronts, and hopefully with daily testing, with, uh, you know, smart people out there wearing masks, numbers going down. Maybe by the time the season comes along, you know, I think the NHL just had two of uh, 2,700 of their players and personnel test positive. Very small numbers there. I'm hoping that's the way it is in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And that's all we can do right now is hope and then go on to the next day and hope some more. And we know that it's at least now it's not agreed upon, but they are pushing for the players are pushing for an August 1st opt out date. Yes. So. And that, that's a couple days after training camp on purpose so that players can go. They can make their own decisions about how safe do they feel and then choose to opt out by the first. Now, what's not settled is the, the what does that do with a contract? Does it toll? What does this do with your eligibility for pension? There are lots and lots of things. Uh, I heard Charles Robinson from Yahoo talking about it, how it almost feels like this is like a mini CBA that is going on where – the, the regular CBA, that takes up to 10 years for them to, neg- to negotiate, so they are working on it. Uh, Robinson also talked about uh, the players want no preseason. The NFL has negotiated, said they're going to push for one preseason game, and it sounds like the purpose of that is because they want to go to the places where they are going to have the fan experiment, you know, where the, I think Jacksonville said they're going to have 25% Meanwhile, you have Philadelphia who said they're done. No fans. So they want to at least have a test run at some of these stadiums to see, uh, to you know, work some things out for the safety protocol because this this is what it's all about. We have to keep people safe yeah, and we then don't want, enjoy football. We don't want a game. We don't want two games and then it's over with and you have this right. buildup and anticipation and excitement and then you don't enjoy sports. And sports brings a tremendous amount of normalcy and mental health and things like that, you know, having these things to root for and invest yourself in, you know, is valuable. And we're seeing a lot of sports come back now. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I'm encouraged by the fact that while it is like a mini CBA, it does seem like when they sit down at the table, they're accomplishing something every single time, some type of agreement, some type of movement forward evidenced by this COVID daily testing, something the players wanted. So I'm encouraged by that. Yeah, the, the, in the end, the players want to play. Like their their coordinated, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Twitter campaign was focused around they want to play. The NFL wants the players to play, so we're they're going to play. And I, I'm I'm very yes. encouraged by everything that's happening. I I definitely think we're getting the NFL season. Yeah. All right, the NFL Network's uh, switching gears here. Uh, Ian Rappaport reported that uh, 49ers running back Raheem Mostert. Uh, spoke to a high-ranking member of the 49ers organization to, quote, clear the air and get on the same page moving forward. So we had the public request for a trade. We kind of assumed when we talked about it on the show, this was a posturing move 
this is not he doesn't have a lot of leverage right now not a lot of say, teams that's looking. what this is yeah this is a man who looked in the mirror and saw a reflection of somebody with no leverage and no and went, no oh, suitors crap. No, no suitors i can want a girlfriend but if <laughs> none of the girls want me it doesn't matter <laughs> i mean that's what this came down to i, I you know i said <laughs> this when it came out like who is trading something you know, giving up a bunch to then give him You're a like better deep, contract. Deep seated things coming <laughs> out, Jason, right now. Uh, were you more of a Raheem Mostert in high school, Jason? <laughs> oh, no, my friends. No, no, oh, no, no, no. It was the opposite. Uh, listen, you know, I've talked about it, I think, briefly on the show. You don't, here's the message that I have for Raheem Mostert you don't want to leave Kyle Shanahan. Okay, nobody does that as a running back and then succeeds where they move on their numbers. Uh, you guys remember Steve Slayton? Oh yeah. Yeah. One year wonder. Yeah. That was Kyle Shanahan. I mean, well, it's, Shanahan has gone a lot of guys. It's a lot remember of guys. Remember Le'Veon Bell. Oh, Le'Veon I, Bell was like the best running back in football. And then he went behind a really bad offensive line and goes, Oh man, this kind of sucks. Well, yeah, even beyond. So Mostert's best place for success. I'd be terrified. I have him in some uh, dynasty formats. I'd be terrified if he landed anywhere else. He He's older. He has not had success until last year. He needs the Shanahan system, and he can thrive in it. He, he's kind of moving to the point of value, though, in mock drafts. I mean, I saw Mike on Saturday, the show that you guys did. Mm -hmm. uh, I let Jay Grizz fill in for me uh, as I was on an anniversary trip. You took Mostert in, what, the fifth round? Something like fifth that, Fifth or yeah. sixth round? Yeah, I think it was even later than that. I mean, I, the, the nice thing is this is – you know, a lot of times news doesn't actually change something, but it moves the the needle for narrative street for people's opinions. And that's where, you, you know, it's our job to kind of sift through and say this is I mean, it's good. It's good for most. His value is going to be lower in drafts and he'll probably still be the starter for the 49ers. Yeah, I don't think he's getting traded, so they'll use him. Antonio Brown. Hey, guys, uh, he he tweeted. Um <laughs> That he's done playing football. What? <laughs> I can't believe. Now, this is the third time he's retired. Is this correct? Is this really the like third that. time since September that he has announced his retirement on well, Twitter? I mean, is that a legally binding through. tweet? No. We can walk through some of them because he had uh, the scrap with the Patriots. He got mad and said he's not going to play football. He had the helmet where he said he was never going to play football if he couldn't wear his old helmet we have this one now i believe there might be one i'm forgetting. I, I think you're right i think that but the helmet was before september so i think after september this is the third time the reality is it's i, I think okay. it's very much the same as it was which is if a team were to come after him he would say i'm no longer retired but i don't think teams are coming after him keep in mind if they do he will probably be suspended for a segment of game. So if halfway through the season, uh, some team's star wide receiver goes down and they say, well, who can we turn to? Antonio Brown. Well, they might not get him for the season that they need. Yeah. It would have to be training camp. And uh, we're going to get into a mailbag in a minute. One one bit of news around here, Fantasy Footballers Land, is you, you might have seen a tweet leak out about a little something special that we got going on. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and so we had the privilege of... <laughs> Leak it leaked out. <laughs> oh. We gotta get. We gotta find that leaker, man. Yeah, I don't know how that <laughs> happened, but if uh, the, the rumors are true, we we had the opportunity <laughs> to interview uh, Hall, Hall of Fame safety Troy Polamalu, um, MVP, Super Bowl Super champion Bowl MVP uh, Patrick Mahomes. We'll be airing that interview on our show soon. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. In the meantime. Foot Clan, stay hungry and stay fed with Omaha Steaks. We've been telling you about them for years, and look, everybody listening who has been a longtime listener, they're excited because these promos are the best. And if you're new, well, strap on your helmet of hunger because oh Omaha Steaks God. is offering a steakhouse <laughs> grilling package with an exclusive <laughs> offer for the Foot Clan. It's called oh. the Grand Summer Grill Out Package. Let's you stay at home, eat like you're at the best steakhouse in town. You're getting smoky, sweet bacon, fork tender, filet mignon. Uh, you're getting steak. You're getting burgers. You're getting dog. I mean, it, it's just unbelievable. And, and honestly, my freezer 
is full of Omaha steaks, and my normal diet consists of a healthy dose. And it Free, is freezers. My free, that is not a lie. <laughs> I have three of them. Thank you, Omaha. Freezer. Th- my threezers. Uh, the the grill out <laughs> steak package is unbelievable. Visit omahasteaks.com and type footballers into the search bar to shop summer grill packs today. And don't forget when you order the grand summer grill out package, you'll also get four jumbo franks and four Omaha steak burgers free to complete your steakhouse experience. Also want to remind our listeners about FantasyChamps.com. Use the code BALLERS at FantasyChamps.com. You'll save 10% off of trophies and mm-hmm. and the 2020 draft board. Ooh, yes. Which is now out. It's ready to ship before your draft party. Uh, there's uh, multiple editions of their draft board, and you can check that out at FantasyChamps.com. It's, it's great. It's a great package, a, a way to get ready for these upcoming drafts. 10% off. Use the code BALLERS. And they got trophies. They've got lots of ways to celebrate the right way. They also have things Rings. for the losers. You know, we talked about that on the quick question. Yeah. All sorts of things to to mock the loser in your league. Trophies, rings. Rings are my favorite. Um, yeah, you, I mean, look, you're listening to this. You're going to be a fantasy champ, so you go to fantasychamps.com. All right, let's jump into the mailbag. Mailbag. Mailbag, yeah! Very oh. nice, very nice. Uh, all right. If you now have a- before we get in, we, I, okay. we have to address this with Jason, Mister Bougie Beef. Mm-hmm. Do you seriously have three freezers? Yeah, I was kind of surprised. I thought you had two. I have my fridge and freezer inside my house. Yeah, right. I yes. also have a garage back backup fridge and freezer combo in the garage. Yeah, and then I have a full size industrial <laughs> freezer that is a standalone six foot tall okay. beauty. So yes, it is all true. Right. Six so it's foot true, tall? But, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's may- maybe taller. Like, it's an industrial one. It's gorgeous. I if can you are not so specifying <laughs> to, the, to the kids or the wife, if you're not like, hey, go grab uh, something and out of the out of the freezer. Like, yeah. Yeah. If it's not defined as that, you are missing a massive well, from here opportunity on out, in your house. The industrial freezer is the freezer. <laughs> If it sounds dangerous, like your kids could fall into it if it's six feet deep. You well, so no, it's stupid. it's it's front front open. It's oh, not okay. a top open. You <laughs> thought it was a six foot deep top open freezer? I did. This is for storing bodies. That's the only thing you could do in here. Oh, that was your vision. It was, I was the wonder- mental picture I had. I, yeah, I wondered why you were so surprised with yeah. six. I'm oh. like, I don't know. I feel like most refrigerators are That's about fair. six feet tall. That's. I figured you're on a ladder <laughs> on the way up. The ice cream's on the bottom. Make sure you get it. <laughs> All right. If you have a question for the podcast, we want to oh. answer it. Head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. We also have a voicemail hotline. You can dial 302-464-TFFB. Anything uh, fantasy football related, anything uh, freezer, meat related, those ty- types of no, questions. Yeah. We're totally here for everybody. <laughs> acceptable. All right. YouTube question from uh, Devin. He says, why so low on Emmanuel Sanders? He was really good last year. Is now with Drew Brees in the Saints offense. One of your last mocks, he was going in the last round. And I just don't understand why. Great show. Thumbs up. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm low on Emmanuel Sanders. I'm excited for Drew Brees more than I'm excited for Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, I mean, I, I have Emmanuel Sanders as, as my wide receiver 53, so I think you would oh, say that's, that's... that's pretty low. That's low. Maybe I, I am, too. We'll I, find out. You know, I don't believe that he has... I mean, going back and watching, in fact, I just watched the uh, this last year's Super Bowl, and in that Super Bowl, I forgot how Emmanuel Sanders got free for a pretty much go-ahead game-winning oh, touchdown. Oh, yeah, and he, got, he missed. And yes. Garoppolo overthrew him. So, I mean, look, the last... Pretty much the last play we saw, he was he was great. He's going to a good offense, but now there is no question. Look, Michael Thomas is getting his, and Michael Thomas is the first read. And here's the thing about the first read from Drew Brees. When it's Michael Thomas, it's often thrown because it's like, oh, he's open. Oh, he's going to catch this because he catches like 90% of his passes. So that just that puts Emmanuel Sanders down to a range of, that we're not used to him being at target wise. Yeah, and he's not the second read either. Just to be clear, I mean, Alvin Kamara is Ooh. the second read okay, in that fair. offense, and then you're you're fighting for targets with Jared Cook a little bit. And I'm not that worried. I have him for 70 receptions, 818 yards, and five touchdowns. That's huge for the Saints. It's not huge for fantasy. It's fine. 
But that's about where I think Emmanuel Sanders is in his career. I think he's a great player. He's not a featured player, right? No, he's not a featured player anymore. He's I have him just out of my wide receiver three range, which I think that's where he belongs because like he could easily finish as a top forty guy, and he will have weeks where he'll have you know he'll hit a pretty good ceiling. I'm just concerned about what the floor looks like on a week to week basis. Okay. Nate has a question. He says, which of these running backs do you believe has the least amount of risk? Todd Gurley, Mm. Chris Carson, or Leonard Fournette? That is a uh, a risky bunch. In a PPR league, the least amount of risk. The least amount of risk to me is Chris Carson. Um, Here's why I believe that. Do with the broken hip? I think all three players are an injury risk. Um, you know, Todd Gurley, we worry about the knee. Um, Leonard Fournette has been an injury-prone player throughout his entire high school, college, and NFL career. Now, Chris Carson is currently dealing with an injury, but nobody seems worried about it. The timeline should put him back. But he's on the same team. His competition for touches has gotten even uh, better in the sense that Rashad Penny is not expected to be ready. And he's succeeded in this role, and it's PPR, whereas I expect Leonard Fournette to lose some of those receptions, if not a lot of those receptions, to Chris Thompson. It's, I, I think it's a very interesting debate because I think Fournette might be the safest. But every it, the, the risk factors are different between players. Fournette, you're projecting a change in his use. Carson, you're looking at injury. Gurley, you're probably looking at both of those factors, which puts him at the bottom of the list to me. You're looking at the health, and you're also looking at a change of scenery, so you don't know what his use is. I don't like the answer about least amount of risk being Fournette, <laughs> so I'll go with Carson as well. Okay. <laughs> I think what it's a, Carson. Uh, what do you say, uh, Mike? Initially, initially in my head, it was like, it's Chris Carson, but I'm Andy, I've, I tend to agree with that, that Leonard Fournette, his risk, goes down like he, he was a huge risk earlier and we were still feeling kind of the aftershocks of hearing about a guy maybe traded here there was a, a bunch of red flags with Leonard Fournette but as we move forward I think his the risk goes it lowers uh, every single week and I think that by the time we get close to draft season I think it, Leonard Fournette is going to actually be the safest of those three all right all right let's go uh Hey, Brooks, we got a voicemail question. Is this one good to go? Do you know? No, sir. Oh, it's not good. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's why I didn't click it. I'd rather ask. That is a solid, no, sir. That is a solid question, Andy. That was a well-placed question. An important answer, and you got it. All right. Uh, it does. Now that I'm thinking about it, it makes sense that that might be old. All right. Twitter question <laughs> from Krangis McBasketball, one of my favorites. Oh, yes. Good name. Uh, what are your thoughts on trying to avoid stacking players with a week 13 buy? For mm. instance, the Panthers and Buccaneers. Yeah, so it, it's different. In, Ew. It's different in different leagues, right? So like Scotty Fishbowl League and leagues that do two-week playoffs, they often are in the playoffs in week 13, in which case you're going, you know, with Christian McCaffrey, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, these guys aren't going to be around for your first playoff week. Not like, oh, they could be injured. Their their teams aren't playing football. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, there are some people who want to try to get the bye week by never having uh, uh, you know, a bye week. They want the bye in the playoffs, and they go for gold there and stack them. I don't like ever choosing to stack playoff buys to punt a week. Do you know what I mean? Like some, some players... Whatever it is, they see a bunch of teams they like on week nine and they want to load up on all of the week nine buys. I just don't get it out of the way. I just don't wait it. I don't wait it enough to where that goes into the thought process and decision making. Yeah, me either. Yeah, it's it's not in it's not really in mine. Uh week thirteen is so far away. Like your team is gonna look probably vastly different, you know, by that time. So I'm not I'm not over worried about stacking those particular teams because of the buy. All right, I like this question here because I've I've seen leagues that do this. Chase wants to know, asking on Facebook, is adding a league 
median to your head-to-head league a good idea? And let me tell you where this came from. Once upon a time, uh, all of the really disgruntled, bitter, sad people that lost one week when they had the second highest point total in the league and they lost to the highest point total in the league, Jason Sine. Me, me every week last year. <laughs> they all gathered together in a uh, you know an attic where it's a little bit too short to stand up in, and they all got together and they said, we should add a league median – so that way, when weeks like this happen, at least I get one win against the average score. And so in this instance, in a head-to-head league, you'd have two available wins each week, right? You'd have your head-to-head Correct. matchup, and you'd have your league median score. So you average the scores of the week, and if you beat that, you get a win. If you lose, you get another loss. It's fine. I don't. I if you If your league wants to do it, it doesn't bother me. I'm not going to advocate against it. But I, I, I like have, focusing on one matchup. Yeah, I have personally never played in that format. This last year, I really wished I was playing in that format, <laughs> and I questioned whether even to bring it to a vote in our league of record because it was infuriating to be a high-scoring team every week and just the the chips fall in a, in a sucky way, and now I'm losing games even though I'm one of the best teams. Um, and so I thought about making that change, but I, I do think, Andy, and this is – this is my opinion without having played in one. I like the classic. I like the head-to-head. I like the you've got to beat me this week or you, or you get the win and you get the loss. And I, I got over We it. were entertained. Yes, we were entertained. Our it league was better. Of- you weren't better. You were you were <laughs> I, in physical pain. I was I was Philip Rivering. Philip's rivering <laughs> all over uh, the place. P, P. River. You were Yo, P. River. Oh, P. River? P. Rivering <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Yeah, you were. And but, it was painful for you. And I, as your friend, I'm sorry. Uh, except for the week that I did it to you. But but Mike, I know one of your main yes. leagues is like this. You've talked about it for years. So what is your opinion having been, you know, you've... Yeah, you've never advocated for all of our other leagues that we're in together to switch to this format in like a intense way. What are your well, thoughts? I, I know the... I know your audience. I know the, <laughs> the curmudgeons who are in our league who would... Uh, they're all they're they're not in the attic meeting. They're down in the in the basement meeting, sure. having their grumble grumble. <laughs> we do things the way we've always done them. Uh, I love it, man, and it it really hasn't had to fix a ton of things. Uh, but there has been a few instances where uh, a team a, a team is rewarded for being consistent throughout the year instead of this. You don't see a team with the second most points scored in the league, you know, in the five seed. It just, it doesn't happen in that format, which I, I prefer it. It There's the, the age old argument of how close do you make fantasy football try to be like real football? I think that it started there, but my mentality has shifted of make fantasy football the best game that fantasy football could be. I know it's based off of our points are coming from real football games, but it's fantasy football. Okay. It's it's very very different. Okay, so cutting through all of all of that, if you were making a new league for us and you're the commish, and it's going to be, uh, you know, the three of us and some other people, what which format would you set up personally? I would have the median. I would have a I would have two wins or two points, whatever you want to call it, a week. And if you're in the top half, you get one. If you win your matchup, you get one. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Instagram question from David. He says, "How did you guys meet?" Oh, what a great question, David. Uh, I was another meet question. (laughs) Yes, M E A T. How do we meet? (laughs) Well, Omaha Steaks, Fraser. I was a a a junior in a freshman Spanish class. Of (laughs) shocker. Yes, he um, was. And Andy was an incoming freshman. <laughs> yeah, I and, was a freshman in a freshman class. Right. Um, in fairness to me, I did not stay in that class. I yeah. left. <laughs> uh, I bailed. I bailed on that class halfway through. Um, did you go to a class where you were supposed to be? Like, no, no, no. I just quit. I just people? quit that class. No, I just I dropped out of that class. Um, and then Spanish was my deficiency for college because I I didn't care for it. Um, but that's where <laughs> that's where Andy and I met. We actually in that played fantasy basketball, and I think yeah. that started our friendship. And then, um, which but that was like twenty years ago. Oh gosh, we're so old. <laughs> um, and then um, we, I, I, I had a business uh, several years later, uh, long after um, high school, and ended up hiring Andy. And then he was the COO, and we grew. And then we found this 
an amazing musician for our video games. And he wasn't available. And then and so then we had to go to Mike. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, <laughs> uh, no, you know, Mike did the audio, and so we all worked together at that company for uh, many, many years, and mostly cared about fantasy football. And then eventually, we decided to follow the our passions and dreams. Yeah, that's how we met. <laughs> And here we are. Uh, really important follow-up question here. Well, let's go to this this one first. Hold on. Adam wants to know, is there a world where Teddy Bridgewater is a top 10 quarterback this year? My my answer to that is no. Is there a world? I think it exists, yes. In, in like the multiverse? Like there's <laughs> right. one of those well, they, yeah. one well, of those multiverses where it happens? Well, if you're saying in the multiverse, then yes, because in the multiverse, anything that can happen does happen. I, well, but I think in this world, I think top 10, I think it could happen, yes. I lean that I don't think that's in his range of outcomes. If I were to give him a range of outcomes, I think he would probably be quarterback 12 or 13 at, at, at the top. He doesn't go downfield. Um, I, I will say this for, for Mike's sake um, and his argument. It's a bad defense. It's an incoming offense from college that looks to spread it out, throw it a lot. And he has a lot of great weapons with Christian McCaffrey yes. and DJ Moore. They signed Robbie Anderson. They have Curtis Samuel. So the weapons are there. I guess I just don't believe in the in the talent to really go from quality NFL quarterback to really good fantasy quarterback. He's Top not- 10 is a pretty it's a pretty high bar. Let me let me throw some other names out there though. Mike said yes a possibility. I said no. I'm going to name some other quarterbacks. You tell me if top 10 is in the range of outcomes, okay? Okay. All right. Joe Burrow. I'm going to say yes. Uh yeah, I think it is possible. He runs the ball and if he comes on yes. and just continues from his college pace. Philip Rivers in Indianapolis. Yeah. I pass. I, pa- <laughs> I I refuse to say I refuse to say yes. If he is, he's going to be the quarterback ten and consistently mediocre. Drew Locke. No. No. Derek Carr. No. Yes. Teddy. So you said Teddy Bridgewater. Yes, Mike. But Derek Carr. No. Yes. I know who Derek Carr is. I know what that offense is. I don't know for sure what Matt Jaw Rule is going to do on the offensive side of the ball. That's why I, that's why I say it's possible. I'm the, you want to ask me a percentage chance? It's not high. Okay. 2 to 3%. Dwayne, I mean, Dwayne Haskins, saying, Mike. No. Okay. 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 All right, uh YouTube question. Adam Gaze or Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> oh man. Misa want Jar Jar. Oh. <laughs> Misa loved Jar Jar. I would, I would have him be. Oh, come on! I genuinely would have him be my best friend. Oh you, man! If he needed a place to live, <clears throat> and it, and and I didn't have an extra bedroom, and we had to go bunk beds, like that was the extreme. I would go. I would go. You Jar-Jar. would rather be bunk bait, oh, bunk like, mates with Jar Jar yeah, Binks. I think we could have a good time. I think Jar Jar. Look, sometimes he's going to annoy me, but I think we'd have a. We'd he's have very a good, clumsy. We'd have a good time. We'd, we, you know. We'd, we'd cut it up, get into some trouble, have some fun, and I, I just think I would be so depressed. Misa, Misa like Omaha steaks? <laughs> yes. Oh, he'd be, I'm he'd sure be okay with it. Yeah. yeah I, I feel bad because I, I know the backstory. Like the, the, the guy who did the voiceover for Jar Jar Binks, like this, this like ruined a bunch of stuff for his life. And can you imagine the big break? You're going to be in the new Star Wars movies. They give you this character where you get to like, try and be animated and then it comes out and it is just the worst it is the worst i'm walking my kids through all of the star wars movies i just watched the prequels a couple weeks ago how'd that go oh man how'd that go oh man so who are you choosing? who are you choosing mike oh jar jar Binks. <laughs> yeah, <choosing>? exactly exactly <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> fictional character all right uh, uh what value does adam thielen this is from i'm devin on instagram what value does adam thielen hold in a dynasty format i think he holds more value to fantasy than he holds to the minds um it, when most people like he is currently undervalued in fantasy i think he would be a decent trade for target because you can get him a little cheap people who own he will be turning 30 in August. yes he'll be turning 30 
People who own him are looking to get rid of him. He had an injury-riddled season last year. He's 30 years old. They're going to want to get a little bit younger. If I could trade a prospect who has not proved himself um, and a second-round pick for Adam Thielen, I would do that because I believe Adam Thielen has two or three good years left, probably two, um, but he's going to be really relevant for fantasy. That's how I view him, and I don't mind – you know, trying to win a championship with a veteran, even at the expense of youth. All right. Instagram question from Rob Tober's Red Robsters says, should you draft a <laughs> – What? Should you draft a backup tight end quarterback or team defense? No. 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 no unless your but league there, format the, is different from a standard. There are certain instances where – I'm good taking a backup quarterback. Know your league. Uh, sometimes there are leagues that they are just quarterback crazy, and it's even though they start one, it, they end up taking all of the the start up or, or starting quarterbacks in that draft. And if that's the case, you won't be able to stream off of the waiver wire. You can still get value. You can still get a very competent fantasy quarterback later on the draft. But that option of going to the waiver wire every single week to find someone who's in a very positive matchup that may not be there. So if that's the case, then yes, I would draft two quarterbacks and play their matchups. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. Chris wants to know, what do you think about a Tyreek, Kelsey, and Mahomes stack in the first three rounds in a season-long league? So if, hypothetically, I mean, that's Tyreek in the first then? Kelsey in the second, Mahomes in the third? Yeah, that that would be the, the way the ADP would match. So, I mean, the the question that jumps out for our show is related to Mahomes in the third and investing in the quarterback. And maybe if you have Tyreek and Kelsey, you're staring down Patrick Mahomes in the third and you're saying, yeah, I, I want to be a Chiefs fan this year <laughs> more, more than years past. I, I don't know. I mean, I've had the experience of being over-invested in a certain team. I've also had the experience of going Peyton Manning, Reggie Wayne, Dallas Clark, mm -hmm. all the way to a championship. So I don't have a, a problem with Mahomes late in the third round. If that's where this lined up, which I think is very possible. If you took Tyreek in the first, that's the back of the first, probably. I don't know. I'm okay with it. I'm not angling for it though. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think you want to angle for it. And, and you, you laid it out well, right? The, the real question is whether or not you'd want to go in on quarterback that early in fantasy. We don't usually do that. I think there is better value. If you were to go Tyreek Kelsey and then grab another running back in the third round, your team will probably be better constructed because of the way that fantasy football is scored. Um, but goodness, if you just said, I want the chiefs offense, for my fantasy points, I think you're gonna do you're gonna do well. Yeah, uh, Brooks pointed out you'll just be really depressed every time they hand the ball off to like Clyde <laughs> Looks Edwards. Looks like you got a draft, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, all right. Well, I mean, it, it, these these questions are always interesting because we we've had them in years past with like the Packers when their offense was at the top of football, and you know, independently, you look at where these players are ranked. Kelsey's the number one ranked. Tight end. For a lot of people, Mahomes is the number one ranked quarterback. For a, for some people, Tyreek's uh, top three wide right. receiver. Yeah. So independently, I think that you can look at it that way and say, well, look, if the Chiefs have a bad game, I'm more vulnerable on a week to week basis of of risk. But there are one or two offenses a year that you're kind of comfy. I mean, you want Lamar Jackson, Hollywood Brown, and Mark Andrews on your team. You don't well, have to do the draft investment that you would on the other yeah, guys. Yeah, stacking a quarterback is is I I think valuable. I like stacking a quarterback with a wide receiver um or a receiving option. In this case, Kelsey is a wide receiver uh, for for NFL purposes and I like stacking them, but I don't like stacking them when the cost of the quarterback is so high. You you know, right. you were talking about the years past where, you know, if you had the Packers and all their options when Aaron Rodgers was on his game, that would have worked, but the thing is, is it, it was much better when you could go the Steelers route and get Love Bell, Antonio Brown, and Big Ben because Big Ben was never super expensive for fantasy. So look at the stacks if you want to stack a great offense and try to find a quarterback that doesn't quite cost you as much. Um, I've seen Amari Cooper fall into the second round. I don't know if it's 
possible to go Zeke Cooper Dak, but he would be cheaper if you could. Yeah, or if Mahomes dropped to the fourth and you weren't spending that third round pick, maybe it becomes more tempting to have that stack. I don't know. All right, that's going to do it for us. We want to thank Pristine Auction. This week through July 23rd, they have a sportscards.com featured auction. This auction has everything from vintage sports cards to team signed footballs. Bidding starts at $20. All sports, no reserves. Pristineauction.com. Use the promo code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit. Sports cards are getting hot now, by the way. I was going to say, like Gary V loves himself. Gary V, cards. and then now you got Mr. Lefko. Yeah. Yeah. You can make some, you can make some quiche. On sports cards. That's true. That's true. Found those old Kobe Bryant rookies in my attic a few weeks back. Very nice. All right. That'll do it for us. Thank you for tuning in, supporting the show, listening. Like I said, the promised Patrick Mahomes interview is coming soon. It's just not here yet. You just have to wait a little bit. You got to be patient. Thanks, Foot Clan. Talk to you on Thursday. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, never forget about Omaha Steaks Grand Summer Grill Out Package that lets you stay at home and eat like you're at the best steakhouse in town. We're talking Omaha Steaks bacon wrap filet mignons plus pork chops. Plus chicken, plus kielbasa, and more delivered to your door. Visit omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar to shop summer grill packs today. And this week, only Omaha Steaks will add four burgers and four gourmet jumbo franks free with your order.